Finally, we get to start learning how to actually solve some differential equations. We're going to start off by talking about the easiest way to solve differential equations, and that's differential equations in the form that are separable. Before we get into this, I want to review some basic integration techniques, because we're going to be doing some basic integration to solve separable equations. Inside of your cover of your textbook, there's a review of differentiation and a brief table of integrals. For homework, you might be doing some more complicated integrals, but for exams, we're going to keep to the basics. For instance, I will not ask you on an exam to integrate secant u du. However, you should know these basic facts. For instance, the integral of 1 over u du, you should know off the top of your head, is the natural log of u plus c. You should also know how to integrate by parts. Integration by parts is when you have u dv, and you can solve this by u times v minus v du. And I'm not going to go into how to do this, but if you need a review, go back and pull out your old calculus notes and review how to do integration by parts. You should also know your exponent rules. For instance, the product rule and the power rule. You should also know your logarithmic rules. For instance, we can rewrite log of x squared as 2 log x. Again, I'm not going to go through these. This is just a reminder that you'll be needing these skills throughout this class. All right, say I have a differential equation dy dx equals g of x. The first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides by dx, so I have the equation y equals g of x times dx. Now we're going to integrate both sides. So our first step was to get a dy on one side and a dx on the other side, and our second step is to integrate both sides. When I do this, I get y is equal to the antiderivative of g of x and plus c. Don't forget the plus c. That plus c becomes very, very critical in differential equations. So let's look at a real example. So I have my differential equation dy dx equals 1 plus e to the 2x. I'm going to rewrite this in this form. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. When I do that, I'm going to get y on the left-hand side, and then the integral dx plus the integral of e to the 2x dx. And when I do my integration, this is what I get. Now notice I really have only 1 plus c. I really have taken three separate integrals, so I would have a c1, a c2, and a c3. But since I can roll them all up into 1c, I'm just going to do that. In fact, you'll find as we go through the semester, although I won't ever forget about c, you'll find me rolling a lot of things into one particular constant. So then this would be our general solution to the differential equation that we have up here. So we have now just solved our first differential equation. So what is a separable equation? Well, it's anything that can be put in the form dy dx equals a function of x times a function of y. So at first glance, I would say the equation on the left doesn't look like I could put it in the form gx hy, and the one on the right looks like I could. But let's look at the one on the right hand side first. If I let y equal h of y and sine x equal g of x, well I'm adding those two together, and the form it has to be in is multiplication. So this is not separable. And for the one on the left hand side, although it might not look separable, if we remember those exponent rules, we can separate the e to the 3x plus 4y into 3 to the x e to the 4y, and when I do that, I can clearly get a separable equation. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. Again, let's get it in separable form. We want to first of all get the dx and the dy on opposite sides of the equal sign. Now I want to get all the x terms with the dx and all the y terms with the dy. That's why these are called separable equations, because we're able to separate our two variables. So to do this, I'm going to divide both sides by 1 over x, and I'll also divide both sides by y. And I'll get the equation dy over y equals dx over 1 plus x. 
So now let's integrate. When I integrate both sides, I get the natural log of y equals the natural log of 1 plus x plus c. Now this problem I haven't said we can give the answer in implicit form. I want to get y equals something. So to do that, to get rid of the natural log, all I'm going to do is raise both sides to the power e. Also include that constant. This is very important. e to the natural log of y is simply y. I can rewrite the right hand side as e to the natural log of 1 plus x times e to the c. e to the natural log of 1 plus x is simply 1 plus x and now I'm multiplying it times a constant e to the c power. Well I'm going to argue that e to the c is just another constant. I could call it c1 but you know what? I'm going to be crazy and just call it c again. As I go through things, I need to make sure I have this constant, but whether or not I know that it's e to the c, or c, or c2, or c3, at the end I'm going to be solving for whatever that constant is, so it doesn't matter how I got there, it just matters that I have a constant there. You could think of this c as getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We could start with a little c, and as we add more and more to the constant, it can get to be a bigger c, but it doesn't matter because it's just a constant that we're going to end up solving for. So I still have these absolute value bars to worry about. So I'm going to have either plus or minus 1 plus x. Well, if I have a plus or a minus, and I'm multiplying that by some constant that I'm going to find, because the constant's going to depend on our initial conditions, just like it has all semester, well, I can roll that plus or minus into my c as well. And my final answer is y equals c times 1 plus x. Now, if you don't quite believe me, if you think I'm getting a little bit too relaxed with my constant c, let's go ahead and check to see if this solution solves my differential equation. So my original differential equation was 1 plus x dy minus y dx equals 0. Now let's put this in the form of dy dx. Now it's in the form that we had to use to check to see if our solution was in fact our solution. If this is my y, then I'm going to plug it into the right hand side, and then I'm going to take the first derivative. The first derivative of this is just c. So on the left hand side I have c. I divide out the 1 plus x and the 1 plus x, and I find that that crazy constant whatever it is, is in fact equal to that same crazy constant on the right hand side. So I haven't done anything wrong by changing what that c was. So as long as we have a constant like this, we're going to just keep rolling in all the changes into this one giant constant. And what will happen is, if I have an initial value problem, we're going to find out what that c ends up being. So let's look at an initial value problem. dy dx equals negative x over y. Well, it's not an initial value problem until I tell you what the initial condition is. And it's y of 4 is equal to negative 3, or negative 3 comma 4 is my starting point. So first I'm going to make this a separable equation. Let's write the steps up here again. We want the dy and the dx is on opposite sides. We also want all the x's on the right hand side and all the y's on the left hand side. So we want all the y's with the dy and all the x's with the dx's. Then we integrate both sides, remembering our constant, and if we have an initial value, we use it to find c. Alright, so let's do our first step. This one's a pretty easy one, and now we're going to integrate both sides. And now to make this a little bit nicer, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And yes, I left this 2 times c as our c again. And this is our implicit solution, which if you remember from last time, is the equation of a circle. If we wanted to find the explicit solution, it would be that. Except, I haven't used my initial condition. And I'm going to say we're going to stick with the implicit solution. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. So we get that c is equal to 25 which, if you know the general form of a equation for a circle, you would know that was a circle with radius 5. Let's do another example where we end up losing a solution. dy dx equals y squared minus 4. Again, we'll separate our variables and get the dy and the dx's on the other side, on opposite sides of each other, and now we're going to integrate. 
if it's been a while, you might forget how you do an integration of something like 1 over y squared minus 4. And this is something you will be asked to do on an exam. And you're going to have to use partial fraction decomposition. If you don't remember partial fraction decomposition, what it is is you're trying to rewrite a fraction that can be factored into two separate terms, each with one of the factors in the denominator. So in order to do that, in order to figure out what the a and the b will be, you need to rewrite the two fractions on the right hand side as equivalent fractions with the same denominator to match that on the left hand side. This one in the numerator comes from my original fraction, just dy over y squared minus 4. So when I do this, I get 1 equals a times y plus 2 plus b times y minus 2. And to find the values of a and b, you plug in y values such that one of the terms goes away. For instance, if we plug in y is equal to negative 2, then we end up getting 1 equals a times 0 equals b times negative 2 minus 2. In this case, we find that b is equal to negative 1 fourth. If we do the same when we let y equal positive 2, in that case the b term goes to 0, and we find that a is equal to positive 1 fourth. Again, partial fraction decomposition is something that you should know from previous calculus classes, but you might want to do a little bit of a refresher. So now we can rewrite this equation. So with my values for a and b, I get the equation 1 fourth over y minus 2 plus a negative 1 fourth over y plus 2, all times dy equals dx. So now when I integrate both sides, I get x and I'm going to, so, and I'm going to put the plus c on the, the side with the x, and I'll get 1 fourth natural log of y minus 2 minus 1 fourth the natural log of y plus 2. Again, I'm going to use my logarithmic properties. If I subtract two logs, that's the same thing as dividing. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the fraction. Again, I'm going to just call that c. And now I'm going to raise both sides to the e power. So I'll have e natural log of all that. And again, I'm skipping one step. I'm not putting that into one exponent. I've already split up the addition of an exponent as multiplication of the separate exponents. And then I finally get this. But I'm still not done. I'm going to take care of the absolute value sign by taking the plus or minus. And then I'm going to roll that plus or minus into our constant again. And now I want to solve for y. And you can see what I'm doing now is just basic algebra. I'm factoring out my y. Notice at this point I haven't rolled my c with my 2 times c. That's because I now have two different c's. There is a relationship between these constants. I can no longer just assume that the c is one giant c because this y c e to the 4x has a c in it, but the other term on the right hand side has a 2 times c. So we're going to leave that as c now. And here's our final answer. Well, I think the textbook makes it look a little bit nicer by putting it in this form, but of course they're exactly the same thing. And that's my solution. Now I haven't talked about losing a solution. Well, if we go back in my algebra, way up here, we need to remember that if I had y equals 2 or y equals negative 2, I'm going to end up with problems. I'm either going to end up with 0 or a singular solution. And what does that mean? Well, let's look at my solution. In order for y to equal 2, the only way that could happen is if, is if this factor is equal to the number 1. Well, the only way that can happen is if c is equal to 0. That's a pretty boring solution. Again, we call that our trivial solution. But if y was to equal negative 2, the only way that could happen is if this factor could equal to the number negative 1. Well, there's no value for c that could make that true. So that's why this is called a singular solution. It is not possible. So we know our solution has to be 
such that y does not equal plus or minus 2, because we either end up with a trivial or a singular solution. I want to point out one of the examples in the textbook in section 2.2, example 4. I'm not going to go ahead and solve this, although we could. This is a nice separable equation, but I want to point something else out. In addition to needing to remember your integration facts, you do need to know some of your trigonometry facts as well. For instance, in this case, we would need to remember the double angle formula. So those are the types of formulas that you might want to review before we get too involved in the class.